Hello, here we are on the third day of June with the Daily Post Scriptures, Thoughts and Ideas that we hope you'll find useful through the day. The scripture we begin with today is from Luke chapter 21 and verse 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, we're moving on through 2 Chronicles chapters 19 and 20 and the Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 21 to 38. The thoughts of the day. Happiness is not in our circumstances but in ourselves. It is not something we see like a rainbow or feel like the heat of a fire. Happiness is something that we are. If you really want something, you can figure out a way to make it happen. It is no profit to have learned well if you neglect to do well. The motivational thought for the day, we make a living by what we get, we make a life by what we give. And on this day, in 1856 on this day, Cullen Whipple, that's W-H-I-P-P-L-E, patented a machine for making screws. In 1942, in World War II, the Battle of Midway between the American and Japanese aircraft carriers in the Pacific Ocean. In 1950, a French expedition reached the top of the Himalayan peak of Annapura in Nepal on this day. In 1976 on this day the US was presented with the oldest known copy of Magna Carta and in 1989 on this day the beginning of the Tiananmen Square massacre as Chinese troops opened fire on pro-democracy supporters in Beijing. In uh, the year 2018 on this day, Guatemala's Fuego, that means fire, volcano erupted, killing at least 110, with 332 missing and forcing the evacuation of more than 3,100 people. The personal story of the day the choice is always ours. A young nurse was assisting a surgeon for the first time. As he was completing the operation, she told him that she had used 12 sponges, but she could account for only 11. Well, the doctor curtly replied that he'd removed them all from inside the patient. The nurse insisted that one was missing, but the doctor declared he would proceed with sewing up the incision. The nurse, her eyes blazing, said, You can't do that! Think of the patient! The doctor smiled, and lifting his foot, showed the nurse the trough sponge, which she had deliberately dropped on the floor. You'll do just fine, he said. He had been testing her. Daniel's three friends faced a different kind of test in Daniel 3. But they too would not budge. They knew their refusal to worship the image might result in their death, but they never wavered. They proved that they were true to God by standing firm. The Lord still permits trials and temptations to enter the lives of his children. This is the result of giving us absolute freedom of choice in life. Because we're totally free, all options of the world and God lie before us, 24 hours of every day. We are not robots, nor are we in some kind of giant game of spiritual chess. The challenge may come as an opportunity to gratify the lusts of the flesh or as a series of disheartening circumstances. Whatever form it takes, stand for what is right and trust God to supply the grace and power that we need, as we're promised in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. The temptation to serve God is equally strong 
as the temptation to serve the world. We choose to whom we serve. All of life is a test in one form or another. Are you tested and true? To think about the idea here and the, uh, and the scriptures that surround it. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, faithfulness brings great rewards. The scripture is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18 with references from Proverbs chapter 7 verses 1 to 27. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. The young man displays a lack of judgment by visiting a place where trouble abounds, especially at night. The woman's lack of honourable intentions is clear from her dress and the fact that we only find out later that she is married. What's more, she's coarse and defiant and has a reputation for playing around. Her comment about peace offerings was less was likely meant to lure the young man into thinking that she was properly religious. In any event, she flatters him into thinking that he's special, see verse 15, and that her real motives soon become clear, in verse 18. As if to deflect his fears, she assures him that her husband is safely gone. Here we find the content of the smooth words alluded to elsewhere in Proverbs. The dramatic conclusion shows that Far from a tantalising evening, this young man is like a senseless animal led to slaughter. He doesn't realise that his actions will cost him his life. The moral of the story, which we can read in verses 24 to 27, may refer to physical death, although more likely it warns of the emotional and spiritual death that comes from unfaithfulness. People may get away with adultery, but only in a limited sense. Proverbs shows us repeatedly that the path of wickedness eats away at one's conscience and causes little parts of one's soul to die. This path is a highway to the grave, as we're told in verse 27. This is the first, fourth extended teaching in Proverbs concerning adultery. Marital fidelity is very important because of God's purposes for marriage and what it teaches us about his relationship with us. Praise him, focus on those ideas. The second thought, bearing responsibility. A scripture from John chapter 7 verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Get on your knees, ask forgiveness for your sins, confess your faith, and your job is done. Mm -hmm. Not so. That's when your job begins. So many leave the behind-the-scenes duties to the workers in the church. Really, each of us have a duty to perform for ourselves. We need to realise that churches are made up of people. Those people make up the testimony for that church. Remember, these are only humans just like you and me. They make mistakes like you and me, but we still have a calling to uphold. Do you know what our church stands for? Do you believe that it is built on God's word? So many people come to church because it satisfies their need to be in church, or they stay in a church because their friends are there. But what about God and worship? Scripture says, for us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, not man, so we won't have to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. It is your responsibility to know the truth and to follow its requirements. Some humorous Moments for the day. Here's some wisdom from Grandpa. Too many couples marry for better or for worse, but not for good. 
When a man marries a woman, they become one. The trouble only starts when they try to decide which one. <laughs> On anniversaries, a wise husband always forgets the past, but never forgets the present. A foolish husband says to his wife, Honey, you stick to the washing, the iron and the cooking and the scrubbing. No wife of mine is going to work. <laughs> Many girls like to marry a military man. Mostly they can cook and sew and make beds. And they're in good health. And they're already used to taking orders. <laughs> you know we're getting old when everything either dries up or leaks. Old age is when former classmates are so grey and wrinkled and bald and of poor sight that they don't recognise you. The facts of the day. Onions get their distinctive smell by soaking up sulphur from the soil. Strawberries have more vitamin C in them than oranges. And the closing thought for the day. Lord, remind me that today is a day that you have made for me. Don't let me waste it. Amen to that. We hope the Daily Post will help you not waste it. And uh, we look forward to your company again tomorrow. Thanks for joining us today. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.